Hi and welcome back. OK, so we've included a good selection of standard targets with Sightset, covering small ball, high power and air rifle targets from some of the major organisations. If you're one of the lucky ones that only uses these standard targets that we've included, you can stop right here and skip to the next tutorial. But we all know that not everyone publishes their target dimensions and if your club's like mine, they might not even use standard targets. So in this video we're going to cover what to do if Sightset doesn't have the targets that you use. Well it would be a bit of a pointless purchase unless of course we gave you the facility to create your own targets. But before we get your hopes up you can't have rampaging soldiers, raging wildebeest or rainbow patterns. It's got to be quite simple. It's strictly circles and monochrome only. But since most targets are like that anyway it's not actually as limiting as it seems. Enough talk let's get started. First of all, we make sure that we've got the target window open. Then to add a custom target we tap the plus button. Which brings up the add target screen. In the top half there is a little graphic to explain the terminology that we're going to use. It also contains a control to allow us to set whether we're going to create a target with measurements in inches or centimetres. We'll leave it at inches for this target. Below this is a scrolling region that contains five fields, target name, target width, ring width and score, zone widths and finally description. There are dependencies between these fields, so SightSet guides you through the process to reduce the scope for making mistakes. Ok, so let's start with the name. To avoid confusion the name has to be unique. For this exercise I'm going to define the small bore indoor practice target that I use at my club. So a nice easy name. And now that we've defined the name, the target width is active, so we can tap on that to bring up the target width field. Even though this is a 10 inch target, we specify the width a little larger so we have some border area around the target, so say 10.5 inches. This now enables both the scoring rings and zones fields. Tapping on the ring width and score field brings up the add ring window. The first row specifies the diameter of the ring that we wish to add. The outer ring diameter is 10 inches, so we'll fill that in. The next section determines the colour of the ring, black, white or grey. In this case it's black. The score label section allows us to add the score for this ring. To the right are four greyed out direction arrows. These are used to determine the axes that the labels will be drawn on. Well, I bet that wasn't what you were expecting. For a start, the score label is stuck in the middle of nowhere. But don't worry, it will all come good. The next thing to know is that two controls have appeared, a plus and a minus button. Clicking on the plus button allows us to add a second ring. Diameter 8.5 inches, black, score of 5, black labels to north, south, east and west. Tap on done and that immediately looks better. The 4 label has now been repositioned to be midway between the 4 and 5 rings. We add a new row, select it and add a new ring. And so we keep adding rings. Oh, and two things to note. First, you don't have to add rings in size order. Sightset will automatically sort them for you. Second, right up until you tap the Done button on the Add Target screen, you can change any row just by tapping on it. And while we're here, you can also edit rows by tapping on the Minus button. This will only allow you to delete the first row if that row is empty. Now we just need to do the same thing for the zones, and like most targets, this one has two. The inner zone is black and extends from the target centre to the 7 ring. And now we're looking more like a target. Exactly as with the scoring rings, as soon as we've added the first zone, plus and minus controls appear to allow us to add a new zone or remove an existing one. Then we just need a description to help us pick this target when we need it. And we've finished. Finally, we need to check that all the fields are correct since a target cannot be altered once it's been saved. Tap Done, and there's our new target added to the custom section. We can hop over to the adjustment window, tap the blue and white arrow button to change the scenario and select our newly defined target. And there it is in all its glory.
And that brings the tutorial to a close. We've covered how to create your own targets and with a bit of practice you can add a new one in a couple of minutes. The next tutorial is the last of the core tutorials and it's going to cover how to add your own sites.